Welcome to Algebra 2, uh, this video for Concept 19. Uh, this is from Worksheet 19.2, and I'm going to look at 22, 23, 24, these three graphs, as well as 28, 29, and 30. I'm going to look at all these, because they're all kind of, they all, they're all kind of related, they go together. And before I actually start going into these graphs, I'm just going to take a minute to review the general form of the equations for these graphs. Uh, one of them is the absolute value of graph, which looks like this. There's the general form of the equation. There's your absolute value symbol. <clears throat> Remember that h and k give you, for the absolute value of graph, the vertex. So if, when you're plotting and using that equation, that h and k point gives you the vertex. The a value is if the vertex or if the V shape in this absolute value gets wider or skinnier or flips upside down, one of those things happening. So we'll see if that happens on these uh, next few. Uh, the other couple that are in here are the cubic, which is virtually the same, x minus h cubed plus k. And the cubic curve looks like this, where instead of calling it a vertex, this h and k is kind of like your middle point. It's kind of where that curve, the exact middle point of where that curve goes through. And then the third one is y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k, where you have this kind of curve, and the point h and k gives you that starting point. Now again, just like the absolute value, these a values either flip the graph upside down or they make it skinnier or wider. But again, we'll see if that happens on these three examples. Now, in number 22, we're asked to write an equation for each graph below. In 22, there I see my V shape, so I know right off the bat it's going to be this absolute value graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the coordinates for this vertex, which are negative 2 and negative 1. That right there gives me my H and K values. So when I'm plugging into this, I'm plugging in negative 2 for this h value and negative 1 for that k value. y equals. Now it doesn't get any wider than the original graph and it doesn't flip upside down so the, the a in front is just going to be a positive 1. Now when I plug negative 2 in here, negative and negative cancel. Remember anything that goes inside these symbols changes signs so it becomes x plus 2 inside of our absolute value symbol. And then the negative one, the minus one, goes into this k value, which makes it minus one after the absolute value symbol. So there's our equation for number 22. Uh, number 23, now I see that curve, which means I know it's a cubic. y equals, there's our middle point, which is the important one for us, which is that positive three and positive two. <clears throat> so there's my h and k values right there. y equals, now it doesn't get any wider, it goes right one up one and left one down one. It doesn't get any wider, it doesn't flip upside down. So it's just x, so the a value like the first one is just a 1. Now this positive 3 will go in for h, which means it becomes minus 3 cubed. And then the k value is that positive 2 plus 2. So there's my equation for number 23. Number 24, now I see this root graph, square root graph, but notice the only difference is normally it goes up to the right, now it's going downwards. So now I have to deal with the a value, y equals, and then the only difference is, since it's going downwards, is that this a value is a negative. The negative is what flips it upside down. Now the starting point I still need, so for this one my starting point is negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3, positive 4. But now instead of just starting with the square root symbol, I'm going to start with the negative square root. X, and then now I've got my H and K. This is going into the H. The minus and negative cancel makes it plus 3. And then the 4 goes into the K value. Plus 4, there's my equation for number 24. Again, I'm also in this video looking at 28, 29, and 30. So if we look at these three at the bottom. <coughs> uh, 
an action, actually, we'll go ahead and consider the shading. Now it says, I forgot uh, part uh, number 26 has us do some extra work here. It says consider the graphs in numbers 21 through 25. Highlight or shade the x-axis to represent the function's domain. Meaning wherever the curve, wherever the graph actually happens is where we're going to sh shade the x. And the only time this really isn't obvious is the, the square root graph. Now for the v-shape, this v-shape has values for all of these x's because from all of these x's I can go up and hit this line. I have to go down this way but everywhere on the x-axis I can go up and hit that line. Same thing happens for this curve. It's going to go infinitely so I can go to the right. I can plug in all these x's every x on this axis I can plug every single number in work this out and it'll give me a value. The one time that doesn't happen is on this square root graph. The square root graph actually starts at negative 3 and then goes to the right. So on over here, if notice over here, when I go to the left of this, I go up, there's no graph at, at all. The graph doesn't exist past this negative 3. Starts here, goes to the right, there's where it's a little bit different than these. So these included literally every single number for x. This one started at negative 3 and went to the right and got bigger than that. Now for 28, 29, 30. Use the shading to determine each function's domain. Write the domain in mathematical notation. For the notation for these, both of these will end up being the same domain because they include literally every single x. Which means we're going to use the infinite infinity symbols. Because when I show it this way, it's saying I can, no matter what I have for x, to the left I can go to the infinity, less than. To the right I can go infinity meaning I can use every single number and plug it in. So same thing here, x in the middle, infinity symbol, infinity symbol. Now the only one that changes is on this one. So since here it goes to the right infinitely, that means the symbol on the right is going to still be infinity over here. On the left, that's where it changes because now on the left it stops at the negative 3 there's my negative 3, and it doesn't go beyond that, which means I have to use a negative 3 there. So there is my <clears throat> mathematical notation for the domain of 28, 29, and 30 using the graphs above.